In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of the Blessed Month of Abib. And this month we've been talking about the life and the service of the apostles um, and the rewards that come from that. In verse 35 of today's gospel, scripture tells us that Jesus wept. We have a lot to learn from Christ in regard to humility, in regard to love, in regard to mercy, in regard to sacrifice. But we have a great deal to learn from Christ in regard to the proper exercise of our emotions. Our Lord didn't sit by unmoved by sorrow and suffering. He felt so deeply. He felt so deeply that tears poured from his eyes and it says that he wept. And this happened on three different occasions that I hope to touch on a little bit on each one. This happened on three different occasions according to the scriptures, at least recorded, uh, recorded in the scriptures. At least three different times Christ wept. And we're moved by his humanity. We're moved by his emotion. We're moved by his tears. But he did not cry for the same reasons that we do. And on the flip side, we don't always cry for the same reasons that he did. And because of this, I know I have a lot to learn. Our Lord did not cry over his financial situation. He was in poverty. He said the Son of Man had no place to lay his head. But he didn't say that while weeping. And when thousands of people rejected his words and turned their backs to him and walked with him no more, Jesus did not cry for the loss of his popularity or feeling rejected. And yet, when we look at the things that he did cry about, I have to wonder, would I cry for the same reasons? If you knew that you could perform fantastic miracles, if you knew for a fact that you were about to raise someone from the dead, and that as a result of that, many people would come and have faith in God, would you cry? Would you weep? Weep is a different level. So often we weep because we feel helpless. Someone or something that we love has been taken away from us, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's completely out of our hands, so we weep. That's why we weep in funerals. It's not why Jesus wept at the funeral of Lazarus. It's not why. Our Lord had no thoughts going through his mind such as, oh, I will never, never see poor Lazarus again. I will never hear his voice again. I will never be able to talk to my dear friend Lazarus again. He knew that he would be talking to him that afternoon. He knew that. He knew that the sisters of Lazarus and their friends would have their crying turned into joy, their mourning into joy, in just a very short amount of time. And this makes me pause for reflection. I still have a lot to go. If I knew I had the ability to raise someone from the dead, I would be grinning from ear to ear. It would almost be inappropriate. I'd walk into this funeral... Everybody would be weeping and crying, and I wouldn't be able to contain it. I would be smiling, because I'd know. I know something that you don't know. I would know that their tears are about to disappear. I would know that at my word, everybody is going to rejoice. Our Lord knew what he was about to do with Lazarus. He knew. And when he gets the news of Lazarus' death, that's not when he weeps. It's not when he cries. When he knew, he knew about the death of Lazarus. And he goes on a journey to be near Lazarus' sister, uh, sisters Mary and Martha. He has a conversation with one of the sisters. And then near the tomb it says in Scripture that he heard the weeping of Lazarus' sisters and their friends. And he saw their pain, and he saw their hurt, and he saw their love for Lazarus. 
And in great compassion, he joined them. He hurt with them. He wept with them. So much so that even the people nearby looked at Christ and saw, saw how much he was crying and said, See how much he loved him? It's because he had compassion on Mary and on Martha and on the Lazarus' friends, and because he loved Lazarus, he wept. <clears throat> in another instance, in the gospel reading according to St. Luke chapter 19, we didn't read it today, Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 47. Jesus wept. I'm going to read the passage. <clears throat> now as he drew near, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes, for days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground, and they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Not over his friends, but over his enemies. He wept over his enemies in this passage. This judgment that was pronounced on the city of Jerusalem was not a, a judgment on Christians. It was a judgment that had been set forth upon those who had rejected Christ. And our Lord knew that in a few days the crowds would be yelling, crucify him, crucify him. And in less than one generation from the events of the Passion, less than 40 years in 70 AD, the Roman armies encamped Jerusalem. They encamped around them. They lead siege on the city. And in torment for the next several months, the people and the children of that city endured such pain and suffering, extreme starvation, that the world had hardly ever seen. That's what happened. I mean, the love had grown so cold. And in rejecting him who is love, in rejecting him who is life, the people of Jerusalem, they grew very cold. And they went into extremes during this time with the Roman army around them. I'm not gonna, it's very graphic. I'm not going to go into what the people had to do to, to fend off the starvation. I'm not going to go into that. And after this had dragged on for months, eventually the Roman armies destroyed the entire city, destroyed Herod's temple, destroyed the walls. Not one stone was left on the other. And we can't even say, at least from a human perspective, that it was for a good purpose. When the Roman armies destroyed the city of Jerusalem and sacked and pillaged and looted it and spilled the blood over for over one million people, even when they carried the riches out of the city, it wasn't for a good purpose. The Romans hated Christ just as much as the Jews did. It had been said that and I don't know the validity of this, but it had been said that the money taken from Jerusalem at 70 AD is the very money that was used to build the Colosseum. And then we know from our history that for successive centuries, Christians would be thrown to the wild beast and torn to, from limb to limb in the Colosseum as Rome expanded its wrath upon those who served Christ. Anyway, how many of us <clears throat> would weep and cry to hear the destruction of our enemies? The death of our friend? Sure. But when somebody mocks you, and when they spit on you, and they treat you horribly, and you find out finally they're going to get what they deserve, how many of us would weep over that? How many of us would smile? Maybe throw a little party. Maybe some of us would say, it's about time. Finally. You see, in the death of Lazarus, Jesus wept for and with his friends. And foreseeing the destruction of Jerusalem, Jesus wept for his enemies. He loved them both. He loved them both. And if we are to follow Christ... 
then we too must love not only our friends, but who we think is our enemy. Not rejoicing at their downfall, but weeping at it. The third time that it's recorded that our Lord wept is in reference to the Garden of Gethsemane. And it's recorded specifically in the book of Hebrews where St. Paul reflects on this. But many commentators believe that this is a reference to Gethsemane. And in his flesh, our Lord loudly wept and cried in tears and he poured his heart out to God the Father. The first time, the first two times that Christ wept was showing love for his friends and showing love for his, for his enemies. And in this case, he himself is experiencing personal sorrow, personal anguish, personal suffering. In the same situation, you might say, well, I would cry too, of course. We might cry in front of our friends and our family, hoping to get sympathy, hoping that they would either remove the problem completely or at least give us some comfort by weeping with us, hopefully, not telling us how to fix the problem all the time, but just comforting us, weeping with us. But you don't see Christ crying when the, with the lash of the Roman whip comes on his back. You don't see Christ crying from the cross and when people are mocking him and cursing him. You don't see Christ crying for the sake of the disciples, waiting for them to have sympathy for him. When Christ cries in his sorrow and in his anguish, he cries to the one and the only one to whom he trusts to do something about it, to carry him through it. He cries out to God the Father. In no case was Christ helpless. Even on the day of his crucifixion, our Lord said that he could call upon his Father and legions of angels would come and rescue, right? Our Lord Jesus Christ at all times was in control. He was never a helpless victim. So, where am I going with all this? When Christ wept tears, it was never out of selfishness, it was never out of self-centeredness, it was never out of helplessness, it was never out of a lack of trust in God. That's sometimes why I weep, at least for me personally. When our Lord Jesus Christ wept, when he wept for Lazarus, it was because he wept for those whom he loves, those who are his friends. When he wept for Jerusalem, it was because he also shows us to love our enemies. When he wept in Gethsemane, as he prayed to the Father, because it was the Father alone to whom he entrusted his tears and his sorrow and his future. And if we are to follow in the footsteps of Christ, I pray that we can feel emotions deeply. I pray that we can let tears pour out from our eyes and not hold them back. Sometimes, sometimes, we as good Coptic Christian men, Egyptian men, this is, I'm speaking a foreign language right now. This is, doesn't make sense to us. I pray that we can cry and weep for the same reasons that our Lord Jesus Christ wept. Not out of selfishness, not out of helplessness, but we cry in compassion for other people. We cry for compassion for other people. We cry for those who we love. We weep for people who are our friends and our family. And yes, even weeping for those who are our enemies. Not seeking their destruction, but seeking their reconciliation. Seeking their healing. And then when we do find ourselves in anguish and in pain and in turmoil and in sorrow, let us not only weep before other people to get comfort from other people, 
who can give us comfort by joining in our sorrow. But even more so, let us pour out our tears before God in prayer, trusting that he alone is able to help us and to save us. And glory be to God forever. Amen.